So I'm delighted to say James Jones is back with me. Uh, bless him. He was out of action on Sunday, so couldn't do the uh, the Tony Cotty interview alongside me. But we've both um, both listened to it. James was all over it as soon as he got back from his... Uh, it was a wedding in Leicester, wasn't it, Jonesy? Yeah, it was a wedding in Leicester. I was meant to be babysitting while, while Lucy was there, but I ended up going to the wedding after all. So it wasn't, right. wasn't a wasted trip after all. What a touch, mate. What a touch. Well, uh, look, James, straight into the... Um, the issue of the day, of course. Uh, so really delighted to get the first interview uh, with Tony Cotty after um, after he publicly backed his uh, or publicly made public his support for Pi Capital's takeover bid of West Ham. So absolutely delighted, and thanks very much to Tony for um, for giving us a shout and giving us the first interview. Um, Reaction first of all, James. I think uh, th- there's obviously that was it's a very one sided, um, uh, very one sided approach or outlook we've got on it there. Important as we always strive to do on the We Are West End podcast to to give the situation some balance so we'll, we'll go through um some stuff from from west ham's point of view i think actually mate it might be better um to do that first do you think and then we can sort of have a chat about the the situation as a whole because obviously i want to get your reaction mm-hmm. to tony's interview but worth worth noting that the west ham's position in in all of this is that they've received no formal bid to buy West Ham United. So again, both sides, I think, being a bit careful with their wording. I think it's it's safe to say that they're, they're well, no, it's, there, there has been an, an approach. West Ham don't consider it a formal bid. Pie Capital say that it was a formal bid. That's where it stands. Um, West Ham maintain that they haven't seen adequate proof of funds. Uh, Pi Capital insists that they have provided proof of funds. I asked Tony Cotty in what form um, that proof of funds was provided, which is the same question that Simon Jordan asked Philip Beard on TalkSport the other day, and no answer was able to be given uh, under the non-disclosure agreements or the NDAs that they have all signed. So West Ham still maintaining no proof of funds. Was provided. Uh, West Ham's position, obviously, they have a 99-year deal um, on the stadium uh, with the LLDC, of course, and the the rental agreement that we all know about. Um, and Pi Capital are unable to do anything to affect that uh, unless they buy the club, which West Ham still maintain is not for sale. So, I I think from We'll go to you first, Jake. Like I say, important to note those things from West Ham's point of view. Um, I think there's enough cynicism uh, or there is a lot of cynicism among the fan base as to Pi Capital. Um, so first of all, before we get into the nitty gritty, mate, I just want to hear your uh, reaction to to the interview I did with Tony on Sunday afternoon. I think it was it kind of went down the same route as, um, as previous interviews or statements that Pi have come out with, you know, it's quite clear that Tony can't say a great deal. Um, and that's fair enough because of an NDA that's in place. And um, I don't think we're, we're any closer to really finding out what the truth actually is regarding this, this bid. Um, and whether that's down to an NDA or whether, you know, what well, one side isn't being as completely honest as they can be, um, you know, it, either a bid has gone in or it hasn't. Um, and when you've got what is essentially tit for tat between the current owners and you know the, the, the company that want to buy the club, it's very difficult to really to really know who's actually telling the truth. I know fans will make their own minds up on that. Um, I know I know the bulk the bulk of you know the bulk of the support have already made up their minds about you know who they believe is actually currently telling the truth. But in but the you, day, you you've got to beware on that, James, haven't you? I think it's important in this. I know I know people are really disgruntled with with um, David Gold, David Sullivan, and Karen Brady. I understand all that, but I think it's especially at a time like this, it's so important for everyone, us as well, us included, um, mm. for anyone listening and any fans, whatever side they fall on, to just try and observe the facts as they come and try not to let any prior uh, feelings towards either party affect their, you know, affect their decision and just decide because there is a danger, isn't there? Like, like I think it's fair to say, James, you're not overly convinced by 
Pi Capital so far. And if it is a, under an NDA fine, Tony Cotty said there that fans can expect more developments this week. We're having this chat on Monday lunchtime. So by the pod, time the podcast goes out late Tuesday, early Wednesday, things might have changed. Um, do, do, you, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I think but that doesn't still take away from the fact that you know, the, at the moment there's very few facts for for fans to actually assess. Make you know, a decision on, yeah. You know, we, we can't make a decision on it because, you know, one side's saying one thing and the other side's saying the complete opposite. Um, obviously, the, the the club are a, a lot quieter on, on the situation now. See, David Solomon come out and said that there wasn't a bid and there was no proof of funds and PAI are a lot more vocal um, a lot more, you know, they're, they're making a lot more noise now. Um, that's partly the reason why I'm very, very skeptical about the whole situation. Okay. Can I butt in there, mate? So Tony, Tony Cotty said, um, and I think we also heard, we've heard similar things that have come out of Pi Capital, certainly, but Tony Cotty said they had no intention of going public with this bid. Their first bid, um, which has been, or the first approach, uh, you know, we're, West Ham don't think it was a formal bid, Pi do, but the first approach, uh, which all parties are agreed there was, was made in February. Mm-hmm. Nothing nothing made, was made public until probably earlier this month, I think still in August, late July, earlier. So I can't remember the exact date, so forgive me. So if it was Pi's intention to go public with this all along, uh, would they not have done that? Surely they would have done it sooner than six months after the original inquiry went in. And Tony, again, this is Tony and... Uh, Tony's what he said during the interview and it's Pi's point of view, not West Ham's, is that the only reason they've gone public is because David Sullivan came out in the first place um, and poo pooed the bid and in what that in what Pi believe was incorrect and false, put that information out into the public domain and said it was a like a Mickey Mouse bid and and they didn't show proof of funds, blah blah blah. Well, I mean, there's, there's going. I mean, I, I completely respect that, um, and I, I understand that you know it probably wasn't their their intention to go public at all, and it was the reason why they went public was in response to the comments from David Sullivan. Completely get that, um, but then there's there's going public, and then there's going public, um, and they've they've done the latter, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, they've gone public. They've literally gone public, and it, it, the way I see it is that you know all they had to do was just release a statement. And go uh, in response to David's, and, and they did do this in response to David Solomon's recent comments. We're disappointed with what he said. We did put, you know, we did show proof of funds. It was a formal bid for the football club. It was rejected. Um, we plan to go back for a second bid in due course or whatever. Leave it at that. Instead, they've, you know, they've recruited the Ferdinand brothers. Um, you know, they got Tony Cotty on board, which is great. You know, I've got, I've got nothing against that at all. But I don't think any of that needed to be public. I don't think the fans needed all of this additional sort of social commentary going on on, on social media. And, you know, Tom Skinner, the um, the guy that was on The Apprentice, he's, you know, he's back to them um, publicly. And it's like, you know, how, do, do we need to go down this route in such a public manner when is, this is something that's so sensitive amongst the fan base? Mm. The fans are already, you know, uh, already feel the way they do about the current ownership. You know, that you can't get away from that. Um, and what PAI have done, in my opinion, is put themselves in a very, very difficult situation by doing this so publicly. Mm. Um, and that's the way I feel about it, you know. I, I, I've i listened to Tony's interview uh, with you and, you know, I'm, I'm happy that he is on board. I'm happy, you know, he, he said to us last week, you know, it's all about West Ham United Football Club. And it is. That's the one thing it is about. Um, and so when they've got someone in like Tony to advise them and to be involved, advise them on what the fans want, what the fans don't want, how the fans are feeling, um, from, from, from a fan's point of view himself, then that can only be a good thing for PAR Capital. It can only be a good thing for them. Hmm. But I just don't know why fans need to know so much about what's going on from from this company at the moment. Hmm. I just it, it makes me, and especially when a lot a lot of their a lot of their communication, a lot of their PR has been there's been mistakes, um, there's been just ty- like, ty- there's been yeah. typos, 
and it, it all just feels, you know, and it, I might be, you know, it might be unfair for me to say, but, you know, the feeling is that it's been very amateur. Hmm. You know, when you've got tie opposing statements, when you're, you're getting, you know, small things to some people, but quite big things in the eyes of West Ham fans, you know, getting get West Ham, saying West Ham FC rather than West Ham United, um, you know, having a go at um, the fact that the bowling ground never sold out when, when in fact, you know, it often did. Um, well, just, 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 just for my own like memory, what was that? For, where was that, James? Just to refresh my memory. It was, if anyone it, was else. Their, it was their recent statement regarding the, the Ferdinand brothers uh, came out a couple of weeks ago uh, on Friday, I think. Um, you know, and they were just sort of outlining very brief plans in terms of, you know, what their, you know, what their intentions were um, because of, you know, because there's a bid in, in play. They couldn't say a great deal about their vision or, or anything like that. But, you know, they said that their intentions about the stadium and, um, you know, and the Olympic legacy and, and stuff like that, which, you know, fair enough. You know, they've come out and given fans a little bit more insight. I don't think it was needed. And as a result of doing that, they've shot, the way I saw it was that they shot themselves in the foot. You know, they called, hmm. it was West Ham FC, uh, the bowling ground, you know, um, never sold out. We need to increase the fan base. At the moment, the current stadium isn't fit. It's, um you know, doesn't doesn't suit the fan base and stuff like that because of the size of the fan base. That was how I read it, and I just thought, well, hang on, what, like you're not really getting us on side here. You know, mm. little mistakes like that. Um, a few people on Twitter said, oh, it's only minor, minor little problems in their statement, but the overall but then, picture is no. But really, then sort them. Then I always yeah, find that the, whenever exactly, you say it's a minor thing, we'll sort it out. Then if it's yeah, only little, um, I mean, if it's if it's a typo, then you know. Employ someone to make sure that there are no typos. Yeah, you know? yeah. In the yeah, day, yeah, yeah. you're trying to buy a football club, a very, yeah. very famous, you know, historic, historic football club yeah, yeah. with millions of fans around the world that plays in the biggest league in the world. Um, that's had some of the most famous players to ever war- played the game play for this football club. Yeah, and you put in typos, you're making silly mistakes. There's going to be um, difficult hurdles to jump over. Yeah, so jump no over real... the easy ones. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But the easiest thing is to write a statement and get the facts And right get someone to proofread sure it. Spelled. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because of all of that, it's made me think, you know, if you're not getting the detail in something like that correct, how can the fans trust you to get the detail correct when it comes to actually making very difficult decisions regarding the future of the football club? Hmm. And that might sound really harsh when you're comparing running a football club to making a few typos. But... In the day, you know, attention to detail is key, regardless of what level it's at. And you know, writing a statement should be the easiest thing you do as a as a business trying to buy a football club. And so far, they've not done it very well, in my opinion. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the way I feel about it. I might be, we all might be, you know, pleasantly surprised if this all happens. It goes through, and they do buy the football club. You know, we might be pleasantly surprised as to as to where it goes. But um, I think they've got a lot of work to do to to put to put you know to to convince fans that they are the right people to take the club forward tony cotty getting on board is for me i can only see as a good thing i was going to say um, that has it changed your opinion at all i not so much it hasn't changed my opinion on on pai or pilot i haven't i still feel the way i do about you know the way they've gone about things so far but i think when you've got someone like tony talking to them regularly mm. and advising them um we know um, as much as every other West Ham fan does, that Tony has the club's best interests at, at heart. He is a West Ham fan just like we are. He's, mm. he's just in a very, very privileged position. He's very lucky to have, you know, had the career that he had playing for his boyer club, and, and now he's, you know, in the position that he is. So okay. he's the right man in my eyes to be able to be advising them from the inside and going, look, don't say that, don't say this. West Ham fans are currently feeling like this. You want, might yeah. want to change the way you word that. Um, you know, if you do buy the football club, that's got to be a priority sort of thing um, to keep fans on side, to keep fans happy. So for me, that's a really good move from them. It's a really good move. Um, it felt a bit, I'll be honest, uh, it felt a bit reactionary to me. And I know Tony, uh, Tony it spoke to us quickly, on... Didn't it? Well, no, <laughs> it no, no. And to be fair, look, look, look Tony, Tony spoke to us on Tuesday. He'd had a phone call with them yeah. on Friday Um and then the meeting took place on, th- so it was fr- phone call Friday, podcast with us recorded Tuesday night. The podcast went live uh, in the early hours of Wednesday morning. Tony had his meeting with them on Thursday. Uh, again, so there was contact made before the podcast. 
uh, the podcast, you know, it, as as it always does, we're lucky that we've got um, a, a considerable amount of, of West Ham fans that download the podcast and listen to us every week. You've done some good traction on social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah, I'd, again, I don't know. It just seems a bit. That's the sort of thing where you'd hope that I don't know. Maybe it's not as easy, but but you'd hope that. If you were gonna like get into, if Tony had been on board from the off, along even alongside Rio and Anton Ferdinand, the thinking with Rio Ferdinand is obviously that he's the biggest global player. He's the he's the David Beckham to Inter Miami. Do you know what mm. I mean? He's the um, he's got global appeal because he was such a Man United legend. Basically, he did play for West Ham, but I think that that from what I've read from it is that that's where Rio is. And Rio and Anton have worked with Pi Capital before. That's where the relationship was formed on other ventures non-related to West Ham. So, you know, Rio Ferdinand is a Man United legend, isn't he? Or he played for them and was iconic for them for a very long time, was ultra successful, and therefore he's better known across the world than his brother Anton, anyone from Pi Capital, uh, and Tony Cotty, that's that's fair. I'm not upsetting or offending anyone there. That that's fair, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd, again, I, you would have think maybe it would have been better to have someone like Tony on board from from the beginning. I personally believe that Tony's right with what he says about um, having football. Pe- if you buy a football club, you should have football people involved. I'm definitely one for that. You see, Peter Check um, is a Chelsea at the moment in that director's role. Not a great example because they're they're playing rubbish at the moment, but Edu at Arsenal. Um, it's quite a common thing. Oliver Kahn at Bayern Munich. It, it's a fairly common thing these days, isn't it? Even at the biggest clubs in the world to have distinguished former players um, involved in, in some fashion. And I'm of the argument. I know everyone's saying, oh, he's just lost his job at Sky, blah, blah, blah. Well, Frankly, I I think that happens. It's just a convenience, isn't it? And frankly, um, I'm of the opinion that uh, if West Ham are to have anyone like that, uh, that Tony Cotty is a great person to have in such a role, as is, Mm. you know, there's discussions. David Moyes has said recently that Mark Noble's, like they're preparing him for how he can be of a benefit to the club. After he retires at the end of this season, he doesn't want to be a coach, basically, as we've heard before. He wants a, like more of a director of football, administrative role sort of thing. Um, and I think that's brilliant. Have someone like Mark and Tony involved at the club is is fantastic. I think uh, it's fair to say. I know there are ex-players who, who are involved at the club with hospitality and things like that. doesn't seem to be. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, mate, but I, I don't feel there's anyone of that strong like football involvement historic involvement in West Ham involved in any of the decision making processes is there no I no. don't think so not that I know of no obviously you got Stuart Pearce on the coaching side played for the club which was is brilliant but and that, that's what I'm saying so I think it's brilliant and uh, and I think everyone coming at Tony and sort of saying oh it's for personal gain blah 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 well it, uh, I don't I don't see it like that the fact that it happens to be he, he's made it clear that he's not getting paid at the moment, and that, but there has been a position offered, uh, a permanent role for him afterwards. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with Tony having his own personal goals and personal desires to work at, at the football no. club he's always loved and played for. Uh, no, so, let's, let's let's have it right. If if you're in Tony Tony Cotty's shoes, you know, love the club, support the club, played for the club, um, and then a company approaches you and shows you their vision for the football club. Obviously, we don't know that. We don't know what yeah, we're yeah. seeing. Um, and you like what you see, and they go. If we're successful in this, then you can have a job within the within the um, on the, you know a place on the board or whatever it, whatever that job might be. We don't know. Mm. Um, and you, you're a fan, you know, you, and you've got no other work, you know, you've got no job or whatever, or you, you know, you, you're free to make that decision. Like he said, you know, he's lucky in the position that he is at the moment, where he's free to make decisions for himself. He's not attached mm. to anyone. Then you snap that up, you know. If he's seen what he's seen over the last seven to ten days, and it genuinely excites him, you know, I don't because we haven't seen what he's seen. Well, I don't think we, we we're not really in a position to to question his motives. I don't because we can't see what he's seen. If we I just then, if we then see the vision eventually and go, 
mm, not too sure actually you know mm. um then potentially fans might question tony's motives but at the moment we can't it's unfair to go to oh tony cotty's he's only doing it for this or he's only doing it for that or you know it seems a little bit coincidental that he's just lost his sky job i think that's unfair to you know to judge him or his decision making you know based on you know your own judgment of the situation or the company i think worth know, noting james Worth noting as well, Tony was involved in the, uh, was it the Landers Banky or what? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. He was involved in that takeover during his time. He's worked for Sky for 20 years. Yeah. So, you know, it, yeah. there's been, he's been involved in other things when he had a job. It just so happens that this time um, he's, he's at, like, he's, he's uh, been, he's lost his job at Sky. But I, yeah. So I think that, that chat is, not worth the time of day really no, um no. because and i think anyone questioning tony's motives as someone who loves the club i think you're coming at that from from a, the wrong direction um what i i think is important james i know it's easy as we all like to um of you know at certain times that you want to make you want to make a decision as a fan uh, especially with such a contentious issue like this one you want to make a decision as soon as you can and decide what mask you want to pin your flag to. And we've already seen a lot of, to be fair, the discourse has been quite respectful. I've found in all of our comments on the YouTube video that went live the other day uh, on Sunday, sorry. And in the, 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 the comments and discussions fans have been having with each other on our Twitter uh, channels as well at we are underscore West Ham on Twitter. It's just, we are West Ham podcast on YouTube, but all of those James has been fairly respectful, but I'm already getting a sense of people who are determined to be in one camp or the other. One of my favourite comments I've seen on one of ours um, <laughs> the other day, I think it was from our our friend who asked a question of Tony the other day, uh, WHU underscore Mark Reaper, or <laughs> who said to someone, um, you know, this isn't Brexit. You don't have to make a decision one way or the other right now. Like, just, just hold off. Um, yeah. you, you know, it isn't GSB in or GSB out or whatever at the moment it, it doesn't have to be one or the other there can be gray area in between and that's what i think is important message to send at this stage james um is that it's okay to withhold judgment at the moment absorb the information that comes out when it can be that from tony now there will be developments we're led to believe there's going to be whether it's another second bid this week or just more details or more development around it this week uh, it's okay to not have made your mind up 100% at the moment, isn't it? it mm. It's okay to be in two minds. Um, I, I think, I think where this, where this comes from, where it's either you're one side or the other is, I think, you know, fans of society, <laughs> it's society. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, it's number one on the list, but um, I think also fans have been waiting for so long for something, for, for these sort of discussions to be, to be had. Um, and to know that there is a company buying or, or interested in buying the football club, I think fans have been waiting for that for, for quite a few years now. Uh, we all know the situation. Um, and I think maybe a lot of fans are just a little bit underwhelmed by the fact that it's not, you know, as I think David Gold and Sullivan have both said, you know, if the Saudi, if, you know, the king of Saudi Arabia rocked up and said to buy the football club, they'd sell. Um, turns out Pi Capital isn't run by the King of Saudi Arabia. And I think I think genuinely when you look at maybe like the Newcastle takeover attempt, you know, and it was essentially the King of Saudi Arabia. I think, fans, <laughs> yeah. I think fans are a little bit like, oh, it's just a venture capitalist firm. Like it's not a multi-billionaire oil baron or the King of Saudi Arabia or, you know, some, you know, it's it's just a venture capitalist. Company you know what? And, and I think I think genuinely fans are a little bit disappointed and that's playing on their mind a little bit going, well, hang on, you know, we want Gold Sullivan and Brady out. We want the club to be moving forward, but we want the buyer. Uh, we, we half expected any anyone to buy the football club to be, you know, these multi-billionaire owners and perhaps the people bankrolled in this are, and we don't know where the money, where the money is, how much money they've got. Um, it doesn't. But I think. I think without that information, like it, does it? it doesn't sound like it. Um, it. We might be wrong, but I think part that's partly it. And then when you've got all like the little, you know the little PR disasters along the way, I think fans are beginning to think, well, maybe this isn't the takeover we dreamed of. You know, when we moved to the London Stadium, we thought, okay, well, this isn't ideal. This is not really what we wanted. But if it does mean that eventually we're going to be bought out by you know someone that wants to turn West Ham into a superpower, uh, a la Man City. 
um, and maybe Newcastle. And I mean, for me, that isn't important. That isn't no, important. I, do, I, just, I, I mean, I just want West Ham to be a well-run football club and to you know win a bit of silverware and not be you know not be the football club that it's been for the last you know five to ten years. Um, for forty years or yeah. forty years, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't, you know, having someone come in and, and chuck hundreds of millions or billions of pounds into the football club is great, um, but it shouldn't be all that we want. You know, I, we, we want the club to be you know run a little bit better and run a little bit differently to, to the way it is now. And I think fans perhaps looking at this one going, this isn't what we dreamed of, because every fan dreams of it. And I think that's why there's a like a a yes or a no because there's a lot of perhaps it's disappointment i don't know um, i think i think it's just people being guided by some people are just guided and uh, potentially blinded perhaps by i don't care who it is just get these people get gold sullivan and brady out some fans obviously we can see it have come from that point of view and others are being a bit more measured and saying you know i, I I don't just want anyone because there's no guarantee they'll be better. And there is, believe it or not, despite what many people think, there is there's lots worse out there, isn't there? Um, I, my, I, we spoke about it last week, James. Um, I, I think it's you've just got to look at Leicester. That's uh, you know their uh, uh, Kuntop, the their family net worth is about five billion US dollars. I think um, I had a quick look the other day. That's sort of a personal net worth. So I appreciate that company assets and all that might extend to beyond that but that's probably about two and a half um billion quid which is about two and a half times what um david sullivan's worth he's reportedly worth around a billion pounds david gold around 450 million i think um yeah. so yeah that that's not that va- you're they're not like leicester's owners aren't king of saudi arabia wealth are they or like arch ruler of dubai or whatever they're they're not mega oil barons. They're rich, wealthy people, of course. But well, that's it's... that's that's my point, mate. That's you know, if it's not, I think fans are like, okay, well, if it's not going to be a you know, an oil baron or a king of Saudi Arabia, or whatever, then it's got to be someone you know willing to come in and actually run the football club, you know, properly and you know, um, like the way they've done at Leicester. Um, you know, you don't have to be you know, incredibly wealthy to be able to do what you've done at Leicester. It's just about, you know, doing the right thing and listening to the fans and and, and, and the rest of it. Um, and at the moment, like I've already explained earlier on, Pye haven't really given us any reason to believe that they're the ones to be able to do that. Mm, I agree, yeah. Given what's happened over the last, what, three, two, three weeks, the way that they've communicated to the fans so far... Mm-hmm. Leads people to, you know, maybe have a few question marks as to as to whether they they are the right people to buy the football club and take the club football club forward. Whether that's bankrolling, you know, winning Premier League titles within three years or whatever, or whether that's just being a well run football club, both on and off the pitch. There's question marks now, and you know they've now got a job on their hands to to um, you know to put that right and to to remove that you know that that opinion that you know fans have developed about them. Mm. Yeah, I, I I do agree, mate. The um, yeah, I just think at this stage, there's not enough detail to make a. No. Like, I certainly wouldn't come on this podcast and say, "Yeah, this is definitely this is why I'm back in PAI," or at the moment, really, like I'm like you, I'm sort of leaning towards, not really. Like, I don't think this is. Um, yep. it hasn't been done very well. But then I, again, I still think this we're we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg, really, aren't we? And hopefully, uh, again. If if it was me in a in an ideal world, James, if uh, if a company or an organisation were going to come in and take over West Ham, I agree with you. You'd almost rather it all be done, signed, sealed, and delivered behind the scenes, and then what, once it's done, then you can come out and then you sell the vision to the fans at that stage, don't yeah. you? But that that hasn't happened. Um, so yeah, I, I think from from this stage, we've got to wait and see when uh developments or when the details extra details come out uh if at all they're going to we're led to believe it's going to be this week um i certainly don't think uh tony cotty's sort of um place in the whole thing uh can be questioned given what we've we've covered already um and you know you know but by the same token that's not to say that just because tony's now involved that um, it's 100% what we think is is the right thing from the football club. But once uh, extra details come out, um, Jonesy, then I think we can all make a little bit more of an informed decision at that stage, can't we? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, exactly. ho- hopefully we get something in the next week, but um, as long as it's not in the way of TalkSport interviews, because just, like, just leave leave the TalkSport interviews alone. Like We get annoyed when David Sullivan does it. Like Just, just do it via a well-written statement and let us know that way. Or a well-liked podcast called We Are West Ham. I mean, or, yeah, get in touch with us and we'd, we'd happily chat to you. <laughs> exactly. Well, look, but we'll, I say, just to reiterate, we do appreciate um, Tony coming on uh, and speaking to us last week and then, of course, over the weekend as well. Um, so, yeah, if there, anyone's got any questions or anything, do get in touch. We appreciate all of the... Um, uh, all of the engagement we've had over the last uh, couple of days. 